grateful that you are um, that you are here and I am deeply grateful for all that you are doing and that you will do uh, in Advent and Christmas as you seek to bring the messages of hope peace love and joy to the people and we need that so much uh, we need it every year but it feels like this year we have some fatigue we have some uh some level of uncertainty that we've been living with for so long. And so making room in the end for all emotions, for all people, for all, all the things that we're living through is our job in this moment. And I'm so deeply grateful that you are answering that call. I'm also excited about already getting some uh, feedback, some uh, excitement about the end. And so today is all about the practical tips for uh, doing this series, for adapting this series, for thinking about how to use the materials. So let's get started, my friends. I'm gonna share my screen here and we are going to get underway. We have a lot to talk about. So the in housing the holy, um, I have been talking about this and using this, uh, the materials as an example in some other webinars that I've been doing, some educational things. So uh, some of you have already heard more about this, um, but today really is about this practical how to um, helping you get prepped and ready for doing this series. We may have people on, I know we have people on who actually haven't uh, purchased the series and are not Worship Design Studio members. And so I welcome and uh, I'm glad you're here. And I hope that this helps you decide if this would be right for your community. So you can uh, always get more information at worshipdesignstudio.com slash the N. Friends, I'm going to play the uh, series trailer just to immerse us in the, the, the sound of the series, the ethos, the feel, and the theme. So many of you probably have already seen this, but let's just immerse ourselves and let this be an act of prayer for our time together as we prepare uh, to talk about bringing this message to life. So friends, um, you know, every year, Christmas comes around every year, we tell that story yet again. And so each year, what I try to do in the Worship Design Studio is for us to have a different lens to look at the season, uh, for us to, to really dig into some, some aspect of the story that is especially appropriate for our context. And this year, the inn, making more room in the inn, housing the holy in a year when there is so much, uh, has been so much trauma, uh, seems to be the lens that uh, will speak, at least that's what I hope it will for your church. I'm a big believer in both the personal and social aspects of our spiritual journey. And so in that trailer, what you saw is that the, the, for me, the connection in opening ourselves, opening our doors wider, uh, maybe so wide that we go out of our churches uh, into the neighborhoods and, uh, and really focus on the needs of the neighborhood at this moment 
actually also opens the doors of our hearts. And so these things are just walk hand in hand. Uh, and so that really is the essence of this series, looking at how the holy is housed. And, and, and really, friends, when you think about the, the, the manger, the, the stable, the, the lowly means, right, that we talk about, where the holy became incarnate among us, it means that no matter what state we feel like our churches are in, and certainly uh, we're in a lot of different states these days, no matter what state we're in, we always have room. We always have something we can give. No one church can do it all, but we can each do something. And that is the crux of this message. So uh, friends, the, the oh, big overview is that uh, we have this, this image, this anchor image. I teach about uh, having a strong metaphor, something to anchor us. Uh, and the, the one for this uh, series is really the barn door. It's that evoking a stable entrance, the hospitality theme, opening that door. And so we'll see that come to life. Uh, we have many supplemental materials for all the worship arts and adaptations for at home and small groups. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. And, uh, and of course, scripts with everything you need to adapt for your context. And sometimes people say, Marcia, is it okay if I change something? I'm like, that's what you're supposed to do. If you don't, uh, it means that I knew exactly everything your church needs, and I don't believe I do. So what I do is I create the container, I create the template, and then you make the changes that you need to make uh, for, for adapting for your context. So what comes in your downloads are worship scripts for all four Sundays in Advent, Christmas Eve, and the Sunday after Christmas. And so everything in that, you have your liturgy, you have your leader parts, you have your hymn and congregational song suggestions, we have anthem suggestions, and of course, all of that you're going to weigh in terms of what's familiar, what's not familiar, and get that balance just right. We have scripts for children's time and community uh, uh, liturgy that you could extend to the community. We have MP3 recordings and music scores to help you, whether you have a, a, a whole staff of mus professional musicians or you have a part-time musician or you have no music. Uh, we want to be sure that you can use our original music, and so we include those kinds of recordings that you can rehearse with or just listen to it to get the feel of it and then use your own musicians. Uh, there is a, a, an original Threshold Moment uh, introit song. Amanda Udis Kessler is our musical collaborator for this, and uh, also an original prayer song, Make of My Heart a Stable, and that one is actually hot off the press just for this series. Amanda wrote The Hope Waits for Us last year, but but the Make of My Heart a Stable is uh, brand new for this series. Sermon fodder. I know some of you have been saying, where's the sermon fodder? Well, friends, I'm so excited to say that today and tomorrow I am recording interviews with biblical scholars and you will really enjoy uh, what they bring, and you will have plenty of sermon fodder when you need it. I can't imagine you're writing your sermons right now for, for this series, but you will have it uh, very soon, and it will help you. Uh, we have book suggestions for your leadership team. We have original poetry, visual and media arts notes, uh, a series logo that you can customize, and that video trailer you just saw, you can put the your information at the end of that with our downloadable video uh, and get the word out, call it publicity or call it evangelism. So um, we have lots in those downloads. And here's the thing, that last one, access to the Worship Design Studio community of churches to share ideas and support. And friends, uh, this is one thing that the uh, lockdown did for this community, and that is we became such an interactive community so that churches who are doing this series together can always come to the website and you can share your resources, your ideas. Uh, every week we have a, a prompt for people to share ideas about what they're working on for their sermon. So our, our motto in the Worship Design Studio is you never have to start from scratch and you never have to feel alone. And that is what we hope to do uh, for you in your ministry and be in ministry alongside you. So those of you who were on my summer webinar called Metamorphosis Moment, 
know that I have committed this year to what I call variations on a theme in three ways. And I believe this is super important in uh, this time because um, we're in a, a time of rhythm interrupted, right? Our rhythms were interrupted in a very significant way. And people are still finding their way to what is the new rhythm that they are in. And so I am committed to meeting people where they are. And that is not always just Sunday morning. And so uh, I am throughout this next year going to be really working on not just resourcing you for Sunday morning, but how can you then expand that to the community that might not come on Sunday morning, that's even members of your church that, that can't come every Sunday morning, um, and how can we be rhythm flex flexible so that the spiritual nurture is not just dependent on Sunday morning, uh, on-site or online, right? I'm not just talking about that, and we'll see uh, let me just say a, a few things about that. We're gonna we're gonna absolutely always uh, create more sanctuary enhancing, sensory rich worship, but we also want to have community facing and rhythm flexible options. So uh, you know a little bit more about this, and that is how can we create an experience, an enhanced experience for those in the sanctuary and also watching at home, right? So we are gonna pay attention to that. You know, we're all serving a two-point charge these days. Um, so we're going to pay attention to that, but also community-facing. How do we create self-guided experiences, maybe in the beautiful sanctuary and open house hours, uh, DIY devotional copies, uh, rhythm flexible? How do we um, offer worship materials for dinner groups and small groups and mini retreats and maybe a podcast? this is a year of experimentation, friends. This is a year of curiosity. And so these are the kinds of questions that I'm asking and that I'm in inviting you to ask yourselves as well. So in your downloads, you have some examples. I created an absolutely at-home version of all the worship scripts. And I put that in there as an example. Uh, you can tweak mine, you can create your own, uh, but it, it's an example to help um, help spark your imagination about what you might want to offer. And just imagine that you have like a, a, a little box outside your church where these are available for passerby or people in your church have them so that if they miss a Sunday, they can absolutely do this at home. So this is, this is what I'm uh, suggesting that we, we do. We create these ways of reflecting. And in that I have you know, questions, prompt questions for people. And so I have some poetry uh, by my friend, John Vandelar, who wrote poetry for this series. Now this poetry is not in the scripts on purpose so that this could be, say you could use the poetry in small groups, you could use it in your sermons, right? You could use it in many ways. And if you really want to, you could actually put it in your order of worship and use it on Sunday morning. But it's a, another beautiful verbal art form uh, that adds to the series that helps us to reflect. And then, you know, of course, in that at-home version, people can, uh, can re reflect and journal on those kinds of things. So that's one example. I created a, a document that's hot off the press uh, yesterday, uploaded it, and um, it's adaptations and small group ideas. And, uh, and so there's lots of different uh, ideas about how you can extend this, make it more community facing, make it rhythm flexible, uh, sanctuary enhanced. And so I highly recommend that you read through that early on and decide, you know, you're not gonna do all of these things, but pick a couple of them. You know, maybe you're going to do a one-day retreat early in Advent uh, that that helps people have a concentrated focus on the theme, whether they come to the rest of worship in Advent or not. Uh, maybe you're going to decide to have sanctuary open house hours uh, for you know Thursday and Friday from four to seven p.m. where people can just come in. I don't know about you, but I love being in the sanctuary alone in the quiet. Uh, it's mystical, it's magical, it's reflective, it's beautiful. And with this theme, housing the holy, right? Opening the doors, hospitality. This could be a wonderful way to invite people in the community to just come in and experience your sanctuary without the pressure of inviting them to church, which they might not ever do, right? Or to worship. 
uh, dinner groups, right? Housing the holy, this theme of hospitality, perfect uh, idea for dinner groups. So think through that, look at that uh, document. I also wanna say that in that document, and this is really hot off the press, is uh, Worship Design Studio Associate Shelly Walters and her colleague Laura have are creating this new resource. And I love that it's a fresh take on Sunday School for All Ages. And they are piloting their project using the In Worship series. And I'm so very, very glad that they're doing that, grateful they're doing that. I'm gonna ask them to, um, to come on and uh, they're here, yay, Shelly and Laura, woo-hoo. <laughs> so um, I'll come back to this slide so people can uh, get these, uh, this email address and this link, but I wanna stop sharing so we can see your lovely faces. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, welcome, and again, thank you so much for, um, for being with us today. Tell us a little bit about this wonderful initiative and how it can extend the ideas, the content, the spiritual growth of the series uh, beyond just what we might do on Sunday morning. Yeah, of course. Um, my name is Laura Schwartz and this is Shelly Walters and I'm the director of Children and Family Ministries and Shelly is the director of Faith Development. And we both serve at St. John's United Methodist Church in Austin, Texas. Um, I want to share just quickly about um, how this came about. So last fall, we discerned a really unique need in our ministries. Um, and what we were doing for our faith development was wonderful content, but it wasn't meeting people where they were. And we wanted to make sure we did that in, in so many ways. So we saw so this. Let me just ask you a question. Yeah. We use this phrase a lot. And I just, I used it just a minute ago. What do you mean by meeting people where they are? Mm, that's a great question. Meeting them where they are for us, it means many different things. I think as um, meeting our families where they are right now looks as being at home and um, being super overwhelmed with kids being back in school or being home, that the traditional things that we were doing um, weren't necessarily working. Um, they may be more stressed out than they ever have been. Um, and so that, do you want, is there anything you want to expand? And they may be deal, dealing with things um, in, in their faith development and their, their spiritual journey and, and wellness, dealing with things um, that, uh, that, that, more traditional things that we were doing were not addressing in a way um, that they could receive at that time either. Yeah. So yeah. go ahead. This is for all ages. Yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah. Oh, all ages. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so we saw this unique opportunity, right. To introduce something new, um, a different approach to the faith development that's intergenerational. And like, we just said, meeting them where they are. So anytime, any place that they're at, Mm -hmm. um, and we've used it this last year, very successfully in our church in small groups, the leaders use them as a curriculum, mm -hmm. um, weekly lessons in that way. Parents use it for family conversations about faith. Um, and we're excited to, to bring this to you all today. And I'm going to let Shelly share a little bit more. Um, about that. Yeah. Thing. So we, we like to think that we took the old model of Sunday school and just turn it on its head. I love Marsha, how you talked about how this is an out of the box time. This is a year of curiosity. Um, this is a time for us to approach things differently and, um, and to, to be community facing as well. We really feel like, like this is that we have folks, individuals that use this as well. Um, they'll get mm -hmm. it in their email on a Saturday morning and um, they'll use it as their devotional. And it's a way for them to connect to uh, mm -hmm. these themes and the scripture um, in, uh, in, in many ways. It, what it is, it's a curated collection of many different resources that give a variety of ways to engage with the biblical text and theme. Uh, we bring in lots of different voices, especially voices that are marginalized or that you wouldn't necessarily hear uh, on a Sunday morning. Um, it's uh, spiritual practices that are both meditative and also tangible and, and body work and engaging. It's podcasts and videos and prayers and poetry and lots of ways 
ways to engage all ages in both simple ways mm -hmm. and also with ways that you can dive in deeper to the things people can really kind of self-select and, and feel, uh, you know, however the spirit's leading them to engage in, in these different things as well. So, so you've for this curated, yeah. you've curated materials and then people can curate then within that. Exactly. <laughs> There are some things yeah. that, you know, people are like, yeah, I can't listen to another podcast, but I can yeah, read exactly. this little poem and listen yep. to this yes. music as I walk, you know, whatever. Yes. 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 There's and, no limits to it. Yeah. And, and in some ways, um, you know, we, we also like to link, we, we, we know that spiritual practice is not just um, you know, meditation and all of that spiritual practice is also action that we do yeah. action. We do for justice action that we do to help our communities and love loving our neighbor is a spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. And you so we go on to resources, it. encouraging them for those kinds yes. of things as well. Absolutely. And yeah. connect, connect it to ways to people that are doing, doing this kind of work in the world as well. So it's really, um, so all encompassing in many ways. Uh, so for this series, we're developing this pilot product. That's uh, it's our first launch. We're so excited, and thank you, Marcia. <laughs> um, it's our first launch of this model, this really unique approach outside of our local context, which we're really excited about. So you can go to bit.ly slash bread for our journey to see how the curriculum works. We've got kind of a, a, a outline of the curriculum and all the different parts of it um, that are really helpful. And we talk a little bit about the whys, um, which I think is really important too. Um, you can fill out a form there to get more information. Um, we're offering this five-week curriculum for $25, but since it's a pilot product, one thing that we really value, since this is our first time doing it outside of our local context, um, getting feedback back. So since it's a pilot product, um, if you are willing to commit to giving us <laughs> feedback as well, after you've used the curriculum, um, then we're willing to, to just uh, charge $10 for it. So it's five weeks of curriculum for only that. So you can go to bit.ly uh, bit slash bread for our journey or go to bread for our journey at gmail.com. You can email us and ask questions and um, we're excited to to see where this goes. Well, and see thank where you so much. It. And everybody, those yeah. links are all in that downloadable document. So um, don't worry about having to memorize that or take mm -hmm. a screenshot of this. It's all in there. And what I love about this is that you can use it in many different ways. You're going to get mm -hmm. the curriculum from uh, Shelly and Laura, and then you can, you could literally email it every week, one week at a time yeah. to your folks like they do. Or you could give this to your small group leaders and have it be fodder for leading small groups. So many That's different right. ways that you can use it uh, mm -hmm. just with your church members and or outside right. of your church members, encourage your church That's members right. to send it on. And so this is the way that we become more community facing and rhythm flexible. Yay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so yay. Thank Fabulous. you. Thank you so much, you two. And thank yeah. you for using the in as your pilot project. So Absolutely. Excited. Thank All right. you. Yay. Take care. So friends, um, also in that document are some uh, books, uh, some small group kinds of things. If you want to do a traditional book study, um, these are things from, and what I did is I researched um, specific organizations that do things like feed the hungry and uh, house the homeless, um, these kinds of things, because I think that you know, really focusing in on those um, uh, kinds of subjects for this series is the crux of it. All right, so um, let's see. We are about to head into getting um, getting down to the nitty gritty of what's in the downloads and how to use them. So as you know, comes with full scripts. The full scripts are PDF and Word versions, and I'll tell you why. Uh, PDF versions preserve the original, so in case you mess with your Word versions and you need to go back and see what it originally was, you can do that. Um, also because uh, you can uh, access all of these uh, in the website and in the, um, in the app, on your phone and pulling up the PDF for quick reference is something that I do all the time. I know some others do that all the time as well. So you get both PDF and Word versions. Of course, the Word version allows you to mess with it, adapt it, uh, take out the stuff you're not gonna use, put in the stuff you are going to use, and then use that in your leadership. 
My suggestion is to read the overview and the scriptures and synopses documents first. Uh, have your whole team, anybody who's going to work on it, look at those because that gives you the essence of the message and helps everybody be on board with what the main message is. And it makes the work for everybody so much more inspired and targeted so that you are all on the literally on the same page. Now, those of you who haven't gotten the series yet, uh, we make both of these documents available before you purchase so you can see that before uh, before you purchase. But that is really how to get the essence of the message. What are the scriptures? This is based on lectionary year C. Um, and uh, so uh, that's the way to really begin your um, uh, your look at the materials. Now, you're seeing a, a screenshot of the website and a screenshot of the app that you can open in your phone. And so there are two different ways that you can get to the materials. Um, one is download the series. You see that first lesson that says download the series. And when you do that, you get to something called Hightail, which is where we do all, all of our file sharing because uh, it can hold goo gobs of stuff. You do not have to sign up for anything. You don't have to create an account. It just goes right to this and you download the whole kit and caboodle there where you see that red arrow in circle and it should put it right onto your computer so that you can have it. We number it so that hopefully these go in a certain logical order uh, on your computer. So that's how you download everything. Now there's a couple of things that we are adding since perhaps you downloaded. And so when everything is done, i.e. we only have sermon fodder left, um, we will be sending out an email to everyone that says, these are the things we added, perhaps after you downloaded everything, be sure you go back and get them and we'll have that link. So that's how you actually get to the materials. I want to say that on the website, we have created uh, some topics within that um, whole resource. And this is an attempt to organize some of our interaction with each other. And so getting ready for the series, you can share your nitty gritty prep ideas. You can upload like how you decided to do a barn door or where you got the best uh, crates for the least money, um, that kind of thing. So you can share with each other there. Small group and devotional ideas what, what are you deciding to do? Um, share that with each other. Uh, you may find other things that you wanted to do. Sometimes we have people who create Advent calendars out of the series. You know, that's the wonderful thing is that people start to add resources. Sometimes people make bulletin covers and share those. Uh, so we can share all kinds of things. How is your church making more room? This is that piece that connects what you're doing in mission with the series. And so you can share ideas, uh, what you're doing, what you found. And then of course, sermon idea sharing. And, and like I said, once the series starts, the, like the week before, we will always have a prompt. Uh, ben on our team always does a prompt for people to dive in, preachers dive in and start sharing what you're working on. So lots of different ways to, to stay in community, to stay supported uh, for this series. All right, let's start going through the worship arts and uh, talking about uh, ideas. And I'm gonna start with children's time because we have with us uh, our wonderful worship design studio associate, Mark Burroughs. And he has joined us and we're going to talk about the children's materials that you have created, the children's time with scripts. And this was so much fun. When we landed on this idea of using a box, we, both of us have, you know, and many of us probably have in our childhood, this playing with a box thing, right? <laughs> so it, we were just so super excited. So welcome Mark Burroughs and thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you, Marcia, and thanks to everyone who's joining us. I'm just, I'm looking at the participants in the comments, and I'm just blown away by how many people and where you're all from. It's just fantastic. It just yeah. gives me so much hope to know that, that here in the mid, smack dab in the middle of October are all these people who are, who are in on the end. I just, I love that. Um, <laughs> yes, that's right, Mark Burroughs. You were the one when I, when I emailed you and I said, Mark, do you want to help us out with, with uh, materials again? And here's the theme. And you wrote me back and you said, I'm in, I am yep. in, uh, of course. In, in all caps, 12 exclamation points. I just <laughs> love this theme. 
And uh, yeah, when we were when we were having our early conversations about, you know, what are we going to do? And, you know, you said this earlier in the webinar about we tell the same story, but how, you know, how do we do it? Um, but in such a way that it's just it doesn't give us a million things to do and a million different props to find. And because simplicity is important and we are overwhelmed and the kids are overwhelmed and and the children's ministers are overwhelmed. <laughs> and so, uh, so just, yeah, the idea of the box. And it's funny with all the talk too about uh, outside the box thinking, it's nice to have the box kind of keep us anchored a little bit as well. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was nine. And um, when our family got a refrigerator and I don't remember a thing about that refrigerator, but I lived in that box for a month. I mean, that was... <laughs> It was my clubhouse. It was my castle. It was a pirate ship. It was a prehistoric cave. It was just, yeah. And, and you uh, use the, your imagination like that. You tap into that kind of imagination in it. these scripts for each week, because each week that box is something different. Right. So, yeah. So each of the different weeks, you don't, you, the first week it's wrapped up like a present, right? And the I, I brought a, the bigger, the better. Um, <laughs> like if you, it just, it, it just makes it more fun. And yeah. so you bring it the first week for hope and it's wrapped up like a present. And, and we, we open it the first, that first Sunday of Advent, which is like so cool to get to open something up before Christmas. And <laughs> we open it and we look inside and there's nothing, uh, there's nothing in it. Um, and, but there really, there's everything because when you have a heart of hope, uh, it, it, it's everything. Uh, I'm seeing in the comments that some people can't see me. Is that true? Do I need to move over a little bit? No, we can. Uh, now I made you bigger. I, okay. I, um, I stopped sharing this, the slide so we could see your beautiful ah. face for a moment. Uh, okay. Oh, lots oh. of people are saying, Marcia, it's just you. That's so weird. Okay. Let me, let me, let me spotlight you and see what happens. Okay. Okay. How about that, friends? Yay! Okay, you're on. <laughs> so we'll now that this radio show is, you. <laughs> you you've been li um, you've been listening to a podcast of Mark Burroughs, and now here's the video. Um, yeah. So, so, so hold that box week, up again. Uh, hold okay, that box yeah, up yeah, again, okay. Mark. Hold the What's box that? up again. The box, hold it up again. Okay, so it's a big box. Big box. The bigger, the better. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so the box gets to be used as anything. So that first week, it, there's, quote, nothing in it. But there's everything when you have hope. Uh, yeah. You know, one of the things I tell kids and the parents as well is you got to leave room for the Holy Spirit. And because um, if, you're, if, if you're so full of yourself, you got no room for the Holy Spirit. If your schedule is completely jam-packed, you're not leaving room for the Holy Spirit. If you know what you're going to say the first Sunday of Advent in October, you're not leaving room for the Holy Spirit. So that's why, that's why we do this now. Right. So we right. can marinate and, um, yeah, let it and, marinate and, and, and leave her. And kids are so great at that. Kids will take a box and make it a million things. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and so that spirit of play, I think is so important. It really informs our, our spiritual journeys as well, because when you, when you're playing, you take an object and you, you're not limited by what is, but what if, right? And, and you see possibility. And, and that's what hope is about. And that's what leaving room for the spirit is about. And that's what play is about. And, uh, and that's why I, I, I love bringing play into worship. Mm -hmm. And I think not just for the children, but for the grownups too. And things that are good for kids tend to be good for people mm -hmm. and reminding people to, to not be limited by what is, but explore what if is a good spiritual practice, not yeah. just for play. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I love what you just said about um, leaving room for the Holy spirit. And it's true as true of your scripts for children as my scripts for the rest of the liturgy. And that is adapt. You know, you're going to think of different ways to say what Mark has put down on the piece of paper. And it's more important that you're engaging in a way that feels right for you using the, the structure and the ideas from Mark's scripts um, but of course, you know, if, if you're, if you're nervous about it, just use Mark scripts then, you know, I mean, any way that you want to use it. Yeah. But you don't have to stick to, I mean, it's not Shakespeare, it's Burroughs. So <laughs> do with it, whatever, uh, do what works for you. Right. That's right, the, right. The, 
take, take away from this what's true and what will resonate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to show, um, Mark, I'm showing the three parts. So tell us about the three sure. parts. Yeah, so I like to, um, whenever I'm doing children's time, especially for March, I always have my worship design hat on. And so trying to structure it in a way so that there's some things that are different each week, but then there's some rich sacred ritual or routine in the language of childhood because kids need routine. Mm -hmm. And so it starts with a simple call and response prayer. Once again, nothing crazy complex, just, just a, a simple back and forth. And we can do it now. So I'll do the leader part. And then your response will always be, we make room for Jesus. And while you're doing that, you can simply rub your do we make room for Jesus and do the ASL sign for Jesus? You can do that. All right, let's do it together. And I, even though you're on mute, I'm going to try that you're doing it with me. Okay, here we go. I'll do my part first. Make room for family, make room for friends. We, we make, make room, room for Jesus. Make way for love that never ends. We make, make room, room for Jesus. Jesus. Make room for others who need a hand. We, we make, make room, room for Jesus. Jesus. Make room to listen, to understand. We, we make room, room for, for Jesus. Jesus. Amen. So that I like to just start with something like that, something simple that really kind of brings the kids in, whether they're with us in the front, whether they're watching us via Zoom, something that really helps us connect. So that's always part one. And part two is just using the box uh, in a different way uh, each time. So one week it's an empty box. One week um, it's a it's a table, and a, it's a and one week it's a drum, and one week it's a tower, and one week uh, it, it's just different things each week. So just playing into that uh, the imagination of ch of childhood to just find different ways to use the box. So super simple, no props. And what's great. Box. What's great is okay. if you can let your families know who are watching online just to get a box. I mean, right? So they can do it at home. They can have their own prop because it's so simple. It doesn't require a specific thing that not everybody has. Yeah. 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 That's a great point. And I love what you said about the two point charge that we're all serving right now. But I mean, I'm constantly. How can I keep reaching people who are there in person while also reaching people virtually and uh, or reaching people really through virtual means? Yes. But uh, yeah, right. it's tricky. But <laughs> yeah, but that's constantly thinking, how can we reach people who are watching us through a computer? Right. So sing us this little closing song so, you, so people get it in their heads. Sure. So I wanted to, the, the refrain and each week it's different, make room for hope, make room for peace. And I thought, well, what's a great refrain that kids can do well. And I thought the first thing I thought of was the refrain to the first Noel, because even with littles on Christmas Eve, when the verses change, everyone can jump in on Noel, Noel. It's kind of like La Bamba, right? It's just <laughs> that, that, the, the chorus to that. And so that, that was the tune. So that's the tune is the refrain to Noel. And it's, Make room for hope, make room for hope. Jesus is coming, make room for hope. And that's how you close it each week. It changes. Yeah. yeah. So Love simple it. ritual. Yeah. Wonderful. So you've also given us some ideas about adaptations, depending on where we are with pandemic and vaccines and that whole kind of thing for children. So inviting children for, forward as perhaps people are used to doing, uh, sitting on carpet squares that are socially distanced, um, do it as an all play with children in their pew, you, you know, staying with their grownups in the pews, which many of us are doing right now, um, and also done virtually. So uh, yeah, lots of, lots of different ways to do it. Just you have to make your own decisions about that at that time. And then your one final thing um, is about uh, collecting toys throughout Advent. Right. So one of the things of making room has so many different connotations and a lot of families, families who are privileged, families who have more are thinking, oh, we have to make room on shelves for the new stuff we're going to get. Right. Um, 
but you can you can turn that to your advantage through this series and doing a toy drive or a children's book drive and collecting all of those and you can collect them through advent and then on the sunday after christmas which this is just a wonderful thing. The Sunday after Christmas is December 26th. I see uh, we have some friends in Ontario. What is December 26th? Boxing Day. Boxing Day. <laughs> Boxing Day. The Sunday, the Sunday after Christmas is Boxing Day. How so, <laughs> right, right. So bring the toys. And look, we know lots of families are not going to come the Sunday after Christmas. So you manage that by sending out a note weeks in advance. You can collect the toys throughout Advent and then just have them up at the front and the kids can put the toys in the box. So you have this box. big box or hopefully multiple boxes of toys that can then uh, go wherever. We have a mission here right across the street from the church. So we're, we're very fortunate that we get to have that kind of connection. But right. I just thought what a wonderful way to use that idea of the box and, and as a giving of a gift. And it's just, um, it just worked out so perfectly. I couldn't believe it. I'm like, please don't tell me the Sunday after Christmas is boxing. And it's like, yes, sometimes <laughs> it just works out. Yes, yes, yes. That's awesome. Okay, Mark, last thing, and then we're going to let you go. Um, I have created all of Mark's scripts in the at-home children's time reflections. So it's the same scripts, but the rubrics are a tiny bit different so that parents know how to do, know how to do this. Um, on their own. I see Jenna. She must have a message. I have a couple questions for Mark. If, okay, if he great. Yes. Okay, so as soon as we finish this, we'll get to questions for Mark. Awesome. So just know that that's there for you. Uh, and then Mark did some book suggestions for children. I love this. And there's so many great books go, that go along with our theme that he created for us uh, a document that has suggestions for each one of the Sundays. Mark, tell us a little bit about yeah. how people could use this. Sure, lots of different ways. So one is one gift giving, like families often ask me about books. And so here's some wonderful books. Books kind of have a timeless quality. Uh, they feel less materialistic uh, somehow. And so these connect with, with, really connect well with the theme of the inn. I heard you mention uh, like book studies. That's yeah. kind of hard for kids to do like a novel for a, a book club because there's the expectation that they're reading it. And in December, they're, they've got a lot of stuff. But <laughs> a picture book is a really great entry yeah. um, for that. So what, this is why these, these particular ones happen to all be picture books. Although the quilt maker's gift is a longer text than a typical picture book. Uh, and there's uh, the not a box is a great it's just an imaginative one about mm -hmm. the uses for box and I also wanted to direct your attention to uh, if the world were a village which is a nonfiction. I love this book so much we have multiple copies here at our church and it takes all of this abstract data of these billions of people and b this many billion people don't have access to clean drinking water and it shrinks it down to a village of a hundred people and then extrapolates those same percentages mm. so that kids can really get a hold of here's how many people in the village of a hundred, uh, the bicycle is the most prized possession they mm. have. Um, or here's how many of that in the village of a hundred um, have clean air. And so it, it's, a, it, and one of the points it makes is there is enough on this planet for everyone mm. if we share. So there's a real uh, social uh, justice aspect and kids are so socially justice conscious. They're, they're so, fairness and justice are so important to children. And uh, so I highly recommend that book, uh, especially. Right. Jenna, what questions do we have for Mark? Okay, I just see a couple so far. I need to do some of our children's times via video. Do you have recommendations for this? Uh, of, okay, so on how to how to do these as a video or just the, the messages in general? What? I, I think the question is how to do the scripts that you made for this spirit series, particularly over video. Yeah, so great question. I, I try to do these to where, because I've had to do a whole lot via video and, and a lot where we would do a video and then send a link to, to families and then they could watch it on their own time. And so this one can be done really well um, 
just doing them as is with with and videoing them. Uh, there are a couple of times where you can invite a child to participate. And if you're not meeting in person, you can have uh, a worship associate come do it. You know, that's something I like to do sometimes. In fact, I did this last fall when we were only virtual and not doing in person is I brought when I need had something where I needed a helper to help me do it, I would one Sunday, it was our security guard. Uh, one Sunday, it was the lady who works at the front desk. So it was kind of a who are the people in your neighborhood? Oh, that's so so not just the people who wear robes, uh, but all the people that the kids missed. And so yeah. that's, a, that's a way you could adapt it. Um, yeah, thanks for that Love question. It. Yeah. I have one more question. We are doing a pageant. Do you have any recommendations for that? I think that's just a general pageant question. Yeah, um, we're gonna, we are too. Um, we'll see what the, we're, we're currently, our campus is in person, but masks required. Um, so we're able to be close. Uh, so we may be doing our pageants with the fake beards and masks. And, um, and our pageant is just insane. It's 20 wise men and wise women and wise people and, and, uh, uh, it's, it's insane. Um, I don't have a whole lot of advice, just, um, relax and enjoy it. And it's going to be what it's going to be. And, uh, one of the cows is going to cry and one it's mommy and, <laughs> and it's wonderful. It's so, just, and fact, it, yeah, it wouldn't be the pageant without that. Actually. <laughs> um, yeah. So one of the things I loved about being a member of a little church when I lived in Tahoe, was that that church was usually 25 people on a Sunday, but on Christmas Eve, it was like, you know, multiple services and hundreds of people because they were up there skiing. And so no rehearsals could take place, of course. And so the thing was just to have some piece of a costume. And as kids came in, what do you want to be? Do you want to be a shepherd? Do you want to be a da-da-da? You get this little piece of a costume. And then the story is just read in kind of storybook form. And you just sort of, okay, shepherds, come on up, you know, and you just kind of act it out improvisationally. And it's super fun, super spontaneous, and no rehearsal required, uh, uh, except for maybe that's Mary exactly, and Joseph, right? Yeah, that's exactly how we do it. And we have the, we, 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 we get together a little bit before the service, and we have a couple of volunteer parents, you know, what, because I'm obsessive, we have the wise people enter from the east part of the sanctuary and uh and the, they send him at just the right time so you know the we three kings is playing and they send him and that and then the angels come and then the shepherds and the sheep come from the back and it's it's exactly how we do yeah. it where yeah, there's yeah. a narrator and they just they, they get they up just narrate it and and yeah. orchest basically exactly you're orchestrating right. the whole thing yeah as a leader yeah. love yeah. it love it jenna any more yeah. questions for mark before we let him go this one is related to the pageant one, I think. Are there scripts that you would recommend to go with the theme of the inn or just do the story of Christmas? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I always just do a mashup of Luke and Matthew. And then there's always the theologians who are like, well, technically the, the, you know, the Magi probably came two years. And I'm like, ah, okay, we don't, we're not going to wait two years to send the <laughs> Anyway. It's just a mashup. Yeah. Well, this is a good time also to say to people that you have years of puppet plays and we have links to that in the inn on our website. Oh, um, and so consider a puppet play for this year, do something a little different. Um, and Mark has those scripts, but also he has recordings of the voices. So all you have to do is the, you know, the puppets. So that's a really easy thing and, and really wonderful. And actually we suggest, I mean, a couple of them are perfect for this series. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks for mentioning yeah. that. And uh, as I sign off, I'm gonna stay in the chat for a few more minutes. So Great. I'll get to any questions. And if anybody has anything, that's where I'll be hanging out. So thank you all very much. And Marcia, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. It's always great to work with you. We're so, so grateful for your expertise. All right, friends, woo, um, fabulous. Let's move to uh, music, uh, the music arts. And uh, let's talk about specifically what you've got and what to do with them. We've got the music notes document that you download. 
has a list of all the things that are in your downloads, how to use them. It has a quick list of the anthems that we suggest so you can and links to listen to all of them so you can see that all in one fell swoop. Um, so there are, the, the, like I said, theme songs with accompaniment tracks, with uh, piano only, with piano and voice, if you just want to use that. Uh, likewise, with the prayer song. Um, the Manger is Stranger is uh, a new choral arrangement, actually by Mark Burroughs, who is multi-talented uh, and is a wonderful uh, choral uh, con um, composer, but he arranged this original song by Amanda, The Manger is Stranger, so that your choir could do that. And he and we specifically kept it pretty simple so that it's easy to learn um, and easy for smaller choirs. So. All these original things we have arranged with Amanda to for you all to have permission to use, permission to stream. Uh, please use citations uh, in your worship notes, but you don't have to email us and say, do we have permission to stream these? Yes, you do. Now that's not uh, true of the, um, the things that we haven't paid for the rights for. So um, let's, Let's take a look at the original things and then we'll talk about uh, permissions for other things like congregational songs and anthems. But Hope Waits for Us at Advent is the uh, threshold song and there's a, a different uh, verse for every week, hope, peace, joy, and love, of course, different uh, uh, verses on that. And so we have downloads of every one of the verses, both accompaniment and vocal. So in case you just need to use that, you can do that. There's also a special verse for Christmas Eve that is um, a completely different uh, lines. So you'll want to use that as well. But uh, as you will, you're going to ex experience the threshold moment as we did it in our workshop, in our worship planning retreat in just a moment. And what Jenna and I found uh, as we sang that <laughs> or tried to sing it is that it was it works really well in the key that it's originally done in for tenors, but not for anybody else. So, <laughs> so we asked them to make a different version. So now you have in your downloads the same things in the key of A, uh, which is a lower key that makes it easier. So let's take a look at the uh, threshold moment as we kind of put it together. Remember, this is a first run through. It's a rehearsal, so it's not polished, but it'll give you a sense of the song and of uh, what it might look like uh, in your sanctuary as you put it together. Friends, the pandemic has laid bare and widened economic disparity locally and globally. As we enter the Advent season this year, we're going to ask ourselves a question. How can this church, how can this church invite the holy to be born anew right here among us? Offering respite, sustenance, care, opening the doors ever wider to the community, the neighborhood around us. No one church can do everything, but we can do something. And so, as we study the biblical prophets in this time, they will call us to care for our neighbors and to make more room in the end. And as we do, the lonely and frightened spaces within us will be filled with peace, hope, joy, and love.
offer the light of hope, to illumine the door of welcome. May this light shine in our hearts, in our lives, and in our church. May hope awaken us to possibilities and lead us to greater hospitality. There is room in this inn, a house for the holy. My friends, as we prepare for our opening hymn, I invite you to stand and I invite you to wave a wave of hope to others around you, including the cameras and the people at home. And then we would begin the opening hymn. Yay! We did it. Awesome. <laughs> so that was our first rehearsal of <laughs> the threshold moment. And as you can see, there was a, um, a desk cant that comes in that the choir can do over the top of the melody. And of course, once your congregation gets that melody and we've put uh, actual melody lines that you can put in your worship guide uh, in the downloads as well. So um, that's when Jenna and I were going, maybe we should have Amanda transpose this into a lower key as well. <laughs> So that is there. So um, the make of my heart a stable is the original song that's prayer time. And in the scripts, if you've been studying the scripts already, you know that it, there's a guided meditation uh, that's woven in with this uh, song. And, uh, and then it goes into prayers of the people. It could be intercessions like I have written, or it could be you know, if you need something familiar for your folks, you could be prayer time as you, uh, as they would be used to so that you have something familiar. Um, but I, I'm going to play a recording of this uh, song and how it's woven in. And this little recording as an example is in your downloads, so that you can kind of get the sense of the rhythm of this. Uh, and Amanda has written the, the underscoring out for your uh, accompanists that goes with the, the reading over the top. So let's take a listen to this. Make of my heart a stable house for the holy, a warm and sturdy place for hope to live and grow. In this moment, we open the doors of our hearts to honesty before God about what we've done and left undone that created less hope in a hurting world. Let us breathe out any regret. <sighs> and breathe in the life-giving, forgiving spirit of God. And out again with the peace of Christ. <sighs> Make of my life a stable house for the holy, a warm and sturdy place for hope to live and grow. In this moment, we open the door 
doors of our lives to the call of the Spirit, inviting us to become more than we can ask or imagine. Let us breathe out our fear. And breathe in the courage of the Spirit of God. And out again with the peace of Christ. Make of our church a stable house for the holy, a warm and sturdy place for hope to live and grow. So I think this is going to be the heart song of this series. Um, it's, it's one of those earworms. Uh, I, I, you know, hope waits for us at Advent also is one, but this one I, I think is, it's such a simple and lovely tune that I think your congregations are going to really um, start to hear that in their heads, hopefully throughout the week. Um, so that's the, the original prayer song. Um, and, and so those are the original songs, again, that you have permission, all kinds of permissions, don't have to ask for any permissions, please use the the uh, citations. Now, congregational song suggestions, you know, uh, we don't include the actual music in the downloads, of course, they're based on uh, hymnals. Uh, we put the hymnal references in there. You need your own license permissions uh, for both using in the sanctuary and streaming, whatever your licenses are. Um, and as well, the anthem suggestions, those are all sold separately because of course, everybody's gonna be choosing different things. Um, and you need your own permissions in, in that regard. So we just make suggestions to help jumpstart uh, your thinking about it. And uh, if what we choose or suggest is not exactly right, listen to what we've chosen for the theology, for the feel of it, and then find something that's gonna work better with your congregation. So finally, the closing carol each week in the scripts is a Christmas carol, and um, and I write in the leader part, uh, yes, Advent is not yet the birth of Christ. However, as we prepare our homes and this house for the holy, we live in the already and the not yet. We already know the rest of the story, and yet we have not seen the fulfillment of a time when suffering ends. Today we sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. This is week one, a carol written by Phillips Brooks in uh, 1865 after a horseback ride between Jerusalem and Bethlehem on Christmas Eve. I want to take that ride. Um, and I always put a link to see more about the history, but, but I give you enough in that leader part that that's really all you really need to say. Um, but each one of these that I chose had a, an original verse that's left out of most hymnals. And so each week um, there is one, and in this one, where children pure and happy pray to the blessed child, where misery cries out to thee, son of the mother mild, where charity stands watching and faith holds wide the door. Hello, you can see why I chose this one. Uh, the dark night wakes, the glory breaks, and Christmas comes once more. And so uh, introducing that, even if you're just going to sing what's right in your hymnal, introducing that is a wonderful way of focusing on that carol and that theme of hospitality, of justice, uh, of resource sharing, um, of a better day with your folks. And so let us remember that it was in a little and unassuming town where the holy was housed. We too can offer light and hope in a place where faith holds wide the door, even and especially in our little town. And then you sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. So the closing hymn on all of the services is a carol that has a story, that has a missing verse, um, that ties in with the theme. Now, if, if you could, if you want to, take this bit and talk about that in your sermon, right? So there's a lot of different bits that you can use in your sermon. You can use the the scriptures, obviously, uh, but you can also use this story of the carol if you'd like for that to be something and you spend more time with it in the sermon. Uh, there's also in the offering uh, time in the scripts, I talk about 
a different perspective on the innkeeper, which is actually not biblical, but is part of our imaginations, right? Um, a different aspect of that uh, before the offering time. So you could actually preachers put that in your sermon. So you're going to have so much sermon fodder. Your sermons are practically written for you already. If you if you need that kind of help, um, just exert these things from the liturgy and put them in the sermon. Okay, so that, uh, yeah, that's the music stuff. So I'm going to stop sharing for a moment. Jenna, do we have questions about music that I can address before we go on to visuals and media? I am not seeing any questions so far related to music. Okay, fantastic. All right, well, then let's just keep going, friends, because we're almost there. Um, so as usual, Jenna and I put together some ideas um, for uh, visuals and media, and this was a lot of fun to do. And especially in Advent, you already have some tried and true ways that you create sacred space, special space, sacred space in your sanctuary. So I'm not saying replace that. I'm saying tuck in to that some elements of the barn, right? So um, barn doors, uh, these wooden crates, uh, Joanne's has these wooden crates that are just like, um, they're plain, they're not, you know, you could, you could paint them any color or stain them or whatever, but wooden crates give that kind of barn kind of feel. Um, at, the, at the retreat, you saw our setting there, I kind of made the spray of lights down to it. So it's almost like the star uh, light shining down on it. That's an idea. Uh, but we have tons of ideas in Pinterest, in this document um, for the visual and media arts. Let me talk about the barn door. Um, in fact, I think I'm going to share with you um, the actual document. So one moment while I pull that up. So here we are in, um, in the app. I'm going to go down here, visual and media arts ideas. I'm going to click on that. And Jenna, if you can unmute and confirm once it's up that you can see that. Yep. Okay. Good. Awesome. All right, so let me get to the pictures of barn door stuff because I've had questions already about creating a barn door in the chancel. And I think there's a lot of different ways. And thank God for barn weddings, the popularity of barn weddings. <laughs> Pinterest has a ton of ideas about barn doors. So, um, you know, the panels that you can get just to stand to sort of represent that door, that opening of the barn door. Now there's different ways you can do it. You could find someone who actually wants to install a barn door like people are putting in their houses and say, uh, you know, can, can we borrow it until after and then you can install it. Uh, but barring that, uh, creating a less expensive door is easy to do. So anything from, there are backdrops, like look at this backdrop you could use. Uh, that's actually just a photo. That's one way to do it. But I went to Lowe's and um, I looked at, you know, you can spend hundreds of dollars for an actual barn door that people put in their homes that slides, you know, in their bathroom, bedrooms or whatever. But you can also create your own. There's a barn door kit. Uh, it's still hundreds of dollars. So let's get to, to some of the things that are less expensive. There are, you can, if, if you're not in rural, I mean, you might have a bunch of barn wood hanging around, right? If you're in a rural community, this is where this comes in handy, but you can also get it at Lowe's. They sell these planks. So you could just get a plain plywood door. Here's plain plywood. You can see they're like 39 bucks. Um, so not spending a lot. And then you could, you know, stain it, paint it, put these um, planks on it. So you don't have to spend a ton of money to actually create a barn door that would give us that symbol, that anchor image of opening the door uh, wider. Now here's a, one of the things that I think would be super fun is to have that barn door easily movable so that you could actually move it or maybe have two. You could have one outside that's kind of decorated with beautiful Christmas decorations around the edges. And, um, and 
with something like um, the inn on it, painted on it, and then people could take selfies, right? Take pictures. It could be their Christmas card pictures. This is one of those community facing things. Uh, you know, make make a sign that says take your take your Christmas card picture here with your family, that kind of thing. And um, with a little, uh, you know, little piece of paper about the the series, or maybe you even have your at home version for people to take. So that is, uh, you know, some of the ways that you can do a barn door. I heard somebody found a shower curtain that has a barn on it. Um, the lights, I am in, inviting you to rethink your advent wreath and maybe do it with lanterns instead. So like a, a lantern you might see in a barn. And I found this cool picture of these wooden stands, just these simple posts um, that you could actually set the lanterns on to create your wreath. Um, so just get creative, friends. Um, you know, look at all of these ways to create the crates uh, to put lights in them. Of course, you don't want to put actual burning candles inside. Well, I guess they did there. Maybe that's a, a fake one. But anyway, just be careful. Don't, you know, don't burn the barn down. All right. So tons of um, ideas in there, friends, uh, that, that you can, you know, riff on, uh, figure out what you want to do. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's probably all I need to say about that because you're going to come up with your own ideas. Here's a picture of what we did with those lights. And there was a screen right above there. So I positioned a star on the screen that could go right to where that those lights started um, so that it created sort of this, this star and light shining down on, uh, on the church. Uh, so create template series slide backgrounds. Um, even if you, uh, of course, you're not going to set up the sanctuary until right before the season starts. But if you do a day of setting up a temporary one, um, then you can take photos, you can take uh, videos, you can get B-roll. We talked about this last year as we were doing all these videos. Uh, and you can go ahead and create your slide background. So here's a little town of Bethlehem that closing him for the first Sunday. And I've taken a picture, a close up of that visual setting so that I can create a background slide. And so there's no reason why you can't go ahead and create your slides ahead of time, right? If you do kind of a, a setup and get some photos, because I love using photos of the actual setting so that the color scheme and the images are the same, right? It's the same palette. Um, so B-roll, uh, this is from last year because I forgot to take some B-roll while we had that set up. But of course that B-roll that you can use in various ways. And many of you may be using less video uh, than you were last year, but still having some video that you can uh, create these perhaps uh, underneath the threshold moment song that you can send out to people um, as a devotional during the week all kinds of ways you can use video. Now that you have these mad video editing skills, my friends, uh, there's a lot we can do with, with that. All right, Jenna, any uh, visual questions, visual idea questions before I move on to just taking a quick look at the scripts and finishing out? I don't see any questions, but I see a lot of really great ideas being shared in the chat. Uh, one person mentioned they've seen contact paper that actually looks like textured wood and you could put that over cardboard maybe. And so, yeah, lots of great ideas in the chat. Excellent. Well, you know, uh, when we post the video, the, the recording, we also post the chat because a lot of, as Jenna said, a lot of ideas, great ideas come in the chat, but also go to, you know, go to the worship design studio resource and add those ideas, uh, go to that visual and media doc where you saw me go. And there's always a, a, a place to chat underneath there or go to those topics even better and go to the prep topic and add your ideas so that we can share ideas. And that's really when the getting gets good uh, is when you don't just rely on your own imagination, but we have the community of imaginations. That is what the Worship Design Studio can help us do. All right, friends, let's, uh, let's quickly take a look at the actual um, scripts 
just one script. We've talked about most of uh, the uh, what's in there. So we're just going to go through and uh, take a look at one of the scripts to see if you have, if it sparks any questions for you uh, as we go through it. Um, so it's coming up. There we go. All right. So again, um, the I have written out, of course, all of the um, the leader parts because I believe that worship leaders are meant to do more than just say, "And now let us stand for our call to worship," or "Now let us do thus and such." Right? The leader moments are these juicy moments where we can further the theme, further the narrative. And so I write those out, but please adapt them to your own voice. Uh, please say them in the way that you would say them. Um, and so there's always, as you saw in that video, the, the I use the synopses to introduce, there's the, the singing, the readers you saw in that video can be one person or it could be a family if that's your uh, uh, your tradition of having a family do that, you know, and what you didn't see in that video is that when Jenna was singing that first time right here, then the light is processed in, right? And you could process in one light each week, or you could process in like on week two, you could process in both lanterns at the same time, three and then four, or you can just bring one at a time, whatever you decide you want to do. Um, but there's that reader, that part for a, a, an individual, of families of all, all sorts. Uh, you could make that into four readers doing four lines, whatever you want to do there. And then the song repeats. Um, and that's when you can bring in the choir over the top with that desk hand. Uh, I think to do it simply the first time is better because people can just focus on learning the song itself. Um, so there's the piece every uh, week and then the opening hymn. And of course, we give you lots of ideas. So you take that, that Word document and you just decide which one you're going to do. Uh, you uh, erase the rest of them. You delete the rest of them or put in your own, what have you. So you're adapting the scripts. There's the children's time. The children's time scripts are in a separate document. And so um, you would refer to that, the reading. There's two readings in every service um, with an anthem in between. And one of the things that I suggest is that you find uh, some way each week to, to for one of the readings to be uh, a little bit different than just one person reading. So in this first week, for instance, this psalm is so short that you could invite the entire congregation to read it together. Um, which would be, be lovely. Make your ways known to me, Lord. Teach me your paths. Uh, and so you would just put that in the worship guide. These are not your worship guides, right? This is your scripts. And so your worship guides are going to be much less wordy, only with the things that the congregation uses. All right, sermon fodder is coming. Um, and you're going to have plenty of things, plenty of richness uh, for your sermons. There's the prayers of the people and uh, written out that. Uh, audio that you just heard, right? So you want to practice this, friends, from the person with the, the musicians and the person who's going to be doing this breath prayer so that you can get that timing right and feel that out. So give that a, a, a rehearsal or two. Um, all right. So again, here are the, the intercessory kinds of prayers that you could use each week, and they're the same each week. They're categories. That's what uh, the traditional intercessory kind of prayer is, or you can do the prayers in the, to, in the manner to which you are accustomed. Uh, and maybe just use the end part here. May the advent of compassion be born in us, reside within us, move outward from us to meet the needs of the world, making a house for the holy that is each and every child of God. We pray this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, right? So you could do the prayers like you're used to and then just use that last part of it to come back to the theme. Here's that story of innkeeping that I was talking about that starts, uh, that introduces the offering. And again, it's different every week and it's a different perspective that different scholars have about the this fictional character of the innkeeper, uh, but it gets to different uh, kinds of, of topics around hospitality. 
Um, so read through those and see if that's something you want to put there in the offering time, or if it's something you want to draw up into your sermon. I have a separate communion liturgy, so you insert it there if, uh, you know, whenever it is that your community does communion, and of course, adapt my communion prayer to your tradition. I use the classic second century Hippolytus format that is kind of an ecumenical standard, but every tradition tweaks it a little bit. So go through that and, uh, and adapt it as you need to. And there's that closing carol different each week with a, a, a different uh, hidden or forgotten verse. And then a benediction that is the same every week. May God's door of welcome swing open in your heart and in your life. May Christ's humble first dwelling remind you of the plenty you already know. And may the spirit lead you into more possibility and hospitality than you can imagine, making room in the end for all. May it be so for you. May it be so for us. May, be, may it be so for this church. Amen. And then the postlude. So friends, that is, uh, you know, that's a look at one of the scripts and uh, go through these. Your job is to go through them and adapt them, tweak them, but it's all there for you. And it should be pretty easy to uh, create some richness from these templates. Um, Jenna, what about any questions about anything in the scripts? Yes, we did get a question asking just in general about the threshold moment. Um, okay. So is that... I'm looking for that question right here. Okay, yes. Yeah. So would the threshold moment come after a land acknowledgement, announcements, and the candle lighting was the question. I wondered if you could speak to that. Yes, yeah, sure. So what you'll find is that the candle lighting is part of the threshold moment. So whether that's processing a lantern or having that family or that person who's going to read that little part in the threshold moment, that's the time to light, uh, for that light to come in. And you, that first line of that reading says, we light the candle of hope today. <laughs> Big clue. Um, so yes, welcome. Uh, anything that you do uh, as part of that gathering happens. And then the piano begins underneath that synopsis. And that threshold moment includes uh, the lighting. Awesome. That's actually all that I'm seeing right now for questions. Let's see, maybe we just got another one. Oh, is there a blue Christmas resource for ah, this series? Right, That's people have been asking me that. And um, I have not created a special one for this, uh, for this series. Uh, you can utilize or adapt the one that I did for last year. It would still work. It was really about uh, the things that we have lost including people and including the loss of liveliness and livelihoods, you know, we're still in pandemic. So much of that is still absolutely relevant. Um, you might do it. We, you know, most people did it outside last year and actually loved it. So you might do it outside again. You could, you could do it around the barn door, right? You could add some language about uh, open the doors of our hearts, um, but no, I haven't done a special one for this series. Uh, and I don't always do one uh, for my Advent series. I did last year because of the incredible time we were in. But I would say um, to adapt what I did last year or to write one um, that would have to do with this theme and opening the doors of our hearts and welcoming all the emotions, right? And all that this season brings. Nice. Another content question that just came in regarding the scriptures. Is there an alternate reading for the Baruch reading for those of us who do not have Baruch as part of our Bible? Yeah, well, um, you know, Baruch is apocryphal for, uh, for all. It's not part of the, the regular, regular canon for, for Christians, uh, no matter what tradition you're in, but it is part of the lectionary, which I find really um, interesting. And it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, text, especially around our theme, which is why I chose that from the lectionary. But yes, the, of course, there's other lectionary texts that you can choose to do. So just look under lectionary year C under that, um, that Sunday and choose one of the others. All right. 
And I see a question in the chat from Pastor Mary asking for a link to the Blue Christmas resource. I'm going to go ahead and pop that in the chat right now. Um, I don't see any other questions at the moment. Okay. And Jenna, if you would go ahead and put that, uh, we'll go ahead and put that Blue Christmas link in the in resource. And I'll just make a couple of suggestions about how you might adapt it, but we'll put it right in there so you can find it there. Perfect. Okay. Fabulous. Thank you, Jenna. Um, okay, friends, we're about to uh, finish this out. So let me um, go back to my slides. Now, if you are uh, still on the call and you're not, not convinced that the in is right for you, uh, just know that we have been doing these fully scripted series for many years now, and we have many series that actually could work well. I think Angels Among Us uh, could work really well. I think that Fill the Night with Music and or music and Light from last year still applies because we're still in pandemic. Um, you know, check out some other ones. You can always, you can see them all at uh, worshipdesignstudio.com slash advent series. Uh, and like all of the materials that we've talked about in this series, those are also available in those other series. Um, and then for those of you who are Worship Design Studio subscribers, we also have even more advent series in our DIY versions. These come with ideas uh, for every service for every worship art, but they're not fully scripted. So it you uh, do the script writing out of some of the ideas that we give you. So as a subscriber, uh, you get access to a lot of things, including our continuing education uh, events as well. So if you're interested in a full year uh, subscription, you can get that information at worshipdesignstudio.com. All right, friends, announcement. Last year we did this as well. Uh, and we're, I'm going to do it again. We're going to give two community awards. That's two free subscriptions. So if you're a, already a subscriber, that would be a year added on, you know, to your subscription. Or if you're uh, just purchased the in a la carte, we would give you uh, a free year. And that is for two churches that go above and beyond and create and upload resources. Could be videos. Uh, it could be uh, Advent devotionals, whatever it is that you create that uh, really helps churches. Um, it could be threshold moments. It could be videoed anthems. Uh, of course, if churches, if you use anthems, and we'll always put that in there, that you'll have to get permission uh, uh, and have the correct license to use that. But creative adaptation of scripture, uh, anything that other churches could use with your permission, um, who if churches who don't have the personnel or the economic bandwidth to produce their own. So we have a lot of small churches that we love, love, love the worship design studio. And that's why we create uh, these accompaniment tracks as much as we can for our original music so that, you know, those churches that don't have the personnel uh, can have resources and can create something wonderful. So this is part of being part of the Worship Design Studio community. Uh, after November 14th, we'll see what's been uploaded and um, we, will, we will choose two uh, communities for community awards. So um, excited to do that uh, again. All right, friends, that is our Get Ready webinar. And I just want to Again, thank you for all you do. Um, I know that this is an extraordinary time. It was last year, but we're in kind of a different chapter of being in an extraordinary time right now. And um, we are missing some of the energy, the liveliness, the effervescence that uh, usually comes with, with, with our weekly worship. We're wondering how to reach people who are not able or are not accessing re re weekly worship right now. And so uh, know that you are not alone. You never have to start from scratch, that uh, we are trying as much as we can to uh, walk alongside you and give you the resources that you need to do all that you're doing and, and to minister to the people that are part of your communities. I am so grateful to be in ministry with you and uh, many blessings. I can't wait to see how this gets enfleshed, embodied, incarnated in the body of Christ 
uh, it is my pleasure to sort of put it out there and then see you take it and do what you will do with it. I pray many blessings on however it is that your church will discern to house the holy, to open your doors wider and wider, for that is what this world needs so very much in this moment. Please be in touch with us uh, if you need help and uh, many blessings, my friends. May you be well. May you be more than well. May you be blessed and may you feel the love of God and the peace of Christ and the fire of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen.